Hi, this is Rachel from the Dotting Center. If you're new to my channel, I'm a painter. I use water-based paints like acrylics and watercolors in my work. And if you paint, you know that you're left with a jar of yucky, mucky paint wastewater from washing out your brushes and tools. So the question is, how are we supposed to dispose of this wastewater? Well, if you've been dumping it down your sink, You've been doing it wrong. So the problem is acrylic paint wastewater disposal and after tons of research and testing, I'm gonna show you the easy, eco-friendly method that works for me and I'm hoping it'll work for you too. So stick around. So the first thing I want to make clear is that this is a no judgment zone. I'll be the first to admit that I used to pour my acrylic wastewater down the drain of my sink for years. Okay, I truly thought that because the paint was non-toxic, it was okay to do this. Now it wasn't until eight months ago that the drain in my sink clogged and I had to take it apart to unclog it. Well, needless to say, it wasn't a fun experience. So I never wanted to do that again, but more importantly, it got me thinking about where this water goes, what's in it, and exactly how non-toxic is it? Well, that led me down a rabbit hole and I learned a whole bunch of stuff and I'm about to share that with you right now. I think it's important to start any new green project in your home with a good answer to the question of why. Why are you doing this? Well, let's start from the start. So the very first and most immediate reason is your sink is going to be clean, right? So before when I was dumping my paint down the drain, it was a mess. But now I dump it into a bucket and I totally bypass my sink, leaving it clean, fresh, and beautiful. Number two, you can avoid clogging up your drain. That's just, yeah, you don't want to do that. Number three, harmful substances could get into the groundwater and these could harm wildlife and that could have all kinds of effects on the ecosystem downstream from us. And you don't want to do that. That's not nice. And guess who ends up eating these fish? That's right. Oh my. Did I go too far? Uh, Sorry, buddy. And the final reason that you should do this is because, you know what? It's just too easy not to do it. It's actually better than it was before when I was dumping it down the drain because I don't have to clean my sink all the time now. It's more of a lazy situation than it was before. And hey, who doesn't want a shortcut every once in a while? It's easy, it's a part of my routine, and it will be with you too. The hard part is getting set up, but luckily, Golden Paints has made that easy for us. So the solution is this. We have to separate the microplastics out of the water. All of the solid bits have to get out of the water, all the glitters and micas and little tiny pieces of iridescent shine that make our paint so cool. We have to get that separated from the water and then dry them out. And then we throw the dried crusty bits away. And once these, uh, the acrylic residue is uh, dried, it becomes chemically inert and it's classified then as non-hazardous waste. If you're at all curious as to how much all this costs, I did a little cost breakdown analysis here. And you can see the total cost was $48, but I had to buy everything. Um, I figure that I'll do 10 gallons a year. This is gonna last me for years. The only thing you'll have to replenish is the aluminum sulfate and the hydrated lime, but that stuff is so cheap you can get a huge bag. It's not an issue. All the supplies that you need to get started are in the printout, but this is what you'll need. You'll need aluminum sulfate. I used food grade, but you don't need to. You just need to get the kind that you use in your yard. You'll need hydrated lime. These are both soil additives for um, flowers. You'll need some gloves. Safety first. 
You'll need some pH test paper so that you can make sure that the water ends up being the right pH. And then you'll need some coffee filters and a colander and you'll want to size these based on how much water you'll be treating. You'll obviously need to get a bigger size if you have uh, a bigger amount of water. And then you'll need some teaspoons that are only for this. You don't use them in your kitchen. They are then art use only. You'll need a stirring stick and then you'll need a bucket. I got this one gallon bucket. Make sure you get one with the lid so that it can fit tightly because it doesn't smell great. So, And then I just used a, um, a milk container that I cut out the top and then I put the colander inside. And then just because I'm weird, I taped it to the jug, but you don't need to do that. That's just uh, for added stability. Okay, so now that you've got all your supplies, let's do some science, artists. This is fun. So here is one gallon of acrylic wastewater. It takes me about a month and a half to get this much in um, that gallon. So the first step, you want to add some aluminum sulfate. For one gallon, you need to use a half a tablespoon, well-rounded and you can just dump it right into your gallon and then start to stir. You wanna stir it up really good. Next step is you add powdered lime. You add three quarters of a tablespoon to every gallon of wastewater that you're processing. And then you stir it up. Now, after it's all stirred up, flocculation should start to happen. And if you've got nothing going on, it's kind of fun to watch. You can watch this in real time. All of the solid bits start to kind of coagulate. They get together and they bond and they fall to the bottom of your bucket. This is a time-lapse video, but you can see it just kind of works. It's magic. The next step is to check the pH of your clear water and it needs to be between five and nine. If the number is lower, you just add some lime. And if the number's higher, you just adjust it by adding more aluminum sulfate. And here you can see I'm testing the water. It's like 11, 12, so I need to add some aluminum sulfate. And you can add that directly into the bucket and stir it up. And now that your water is all stirred up, it goes back into flocculation mode and it does that whole thing all over again. It's so satisfying. And now just to check, we do a final test and we are at a solid nine. So it's looking good. Now we can pour that clear water off and filter all the solids. All right, so now you need to grab all your supplies, get your uh, gallon milk jug, your colander, your filters, and go ahead and assemble everything. I found since doing this video that I only need to use one filter, but I used two for this video just because I was kind of going extra, but you really don't need two. One is just fine. And then you put that inside your colander and then pour the liquids the separated liquids into this filter. So what I do is I usually set this up outside and then throughout the day, I will just pour in a colander full, go inside, do some laundry, hang out, whatever, let it filter down, go pour more in, and it'll take a few times of pouring, pouring it into the colander, but then it'll filter all of those solids out. All that stuff you don't want 
into the drain, into the waterways, into our ecosystem. Get that stuff out of that water. It just filters it all out. And then once you're done, you just keep pouring more in until you're done with everything in your bucket. So if you're into the science of flocculation, and I mean, who isn't, right? You can watch a video that I've linked below. There you can enjoy listening to sciencey people tell you all about colloids and turbidity and agglomerates and polarity and dispersion and various whatnots. Now, I could just read all that stuff to you, but clearly it's not in my wheelhouse. So I do think it's interesting, though, and if you want to check it out, all the links are down below. So you remember what it looked like, right? Completely gross, mucky, yucky water. And now it's clear on the bottom. There are no paint bits in there. All the painty bits have been filtered out up at the top. It's kind of miraculous. It's awesome. So now the last step is you take all the yucky uh, Payne's Gray paint fleck bits and then you dry that stuff out. You can take what's left in your gallon jug, all the clear water, and dump that down your sink or your toilet. No worries, no one's gonna get clogs from this because there's no solids in it. Please note, uh, this water is clear, but don't drink it. Please don't drink it. It's still yucky. So now you go back after a couple of days, make sure all your sludge has dried into these little dried paint bits. And you can see this stuff is solid. There's little chunks of glitter. There's big chunks of glitter. I mean, it's kind of beautiful. I might make a necklace out of it. But bottom line is right now it's inert. All of the pigments that could be cadmium or could be aluminum is now completely solidified into this brick and you can throw it away in the trash no problem so who's gonna step up and try this your sink your drain and all the fishies and froggies downstream from you will thank you i promise now i for one want to take it a minute to say that i am super grateful to golden paints for providing the resources to us artists who are trying to do the right thing it really means a lot to me when a company shows that it cares about their impact on the environment. And I think that the eight other paint companies I researched and contacted should work harder in this area. Just saying. Anyway, I hope you liked this video and if you did, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I have many more videos. <laughs> I almost made it through a whole video without you coming in and interrupting. <laughs> almost. Almost made it. Okay. Bye-bye. Say bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>